So, here, I'll give this to you. Simple thing is just a regular test light and uh, oh, that stupid key, there it is. Okay. So it says dark blue, so I go and I find on here I've got a dark blue wire. So, instead of penetrating the wire, I'm just going to go ahead and stick it in there. And that's not the one. Power does not come on. So, we got to look at the other wires in the connector. Here's a dark blue with white, which is also considered a power wire. Cram it in there. There's our power wire. No friggin' problem. So, <coughs> separate that. Turn off the dinger. Um, this is the wire stripper that I prefer to use. Everybody sells them. Walmarts, auto parts stores. Because then you don't have to... Some of the wire strippers, you have to feed the wire through the handle. It's really annoying. These are also really sharp. These can cut through little uh, brake cables really easy, too. Which I like. And they only cost about $10 to $20. So... I'm, really seeing that. Yeah, I'm going to choose my size here. In this case, it's the 10. Just whatever fits the best. And instead of cutting the wire together, I'm just going to try to yank on the wire. And basically, if you can see it, hopefully, I have pulled some of the insulation away to expose the wire. And then, instead of just wrapping it around it, which can come loose over time, I'm going to poke the test light through the wire. There we go. Which gives me a nice little hole right in the middle that I can feed my continuous power wire through, which is... That one's blue with yellow, so it's got to be this kind. They're blue with white. See, once again, and this doesn't even match up, this said dark blue, but it's dark blue with white. I had obviously figured that out a while ago and did it myself. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and nice tight twists. I'm going to stick it through. And then just wrap it around the outside like that. Pretty simple. Um... In this case, actually, I'm going to be hooking two wires under the same wire. They're both pretty low voltage applications, but uh, for his aftermarket tachometer, when we eventually do that anyways, I'm going to save myself a hassle right now and do it at the same time. Give it about a half inch strip of coating is about all you need. Twist them together. Feed it through the same hole. Crushed it a little bit, but it's still there. You bastard. So close. It won't go in its hole. Yeah. No, it's a tight fit. Yes, we're full of bad puns here. Jesus. There we go. There we go. Twist them around. Nice and tight. <clears throat> Shrink tubing is better than electrical tape any day whenever you can use it. But in order to use shrink tubing, you actually have to have the wire cut. So in this case, I'm just going to use electrical tape <coughs> over each wire individually. Nice, tight wraps. Like I said, I've been doing this for a while now, and I don't have any problems with my wiring come back to haunt me. So, so that's basically how I'm taping the wires up. So I'm just going through down the list, hunting and packing to figure out which wires are which. A lot of them we're not going to use. Like, I'm not going to bother with the seatbelt warning light. You know, uh, the check engine light will be wired up separate, but that's pretty much just one wire, you know. Most of it's all one wire because it's all contained in one unit. Um, if you're doing a digital dash conversion on, let's say, a Dodge Daytona with a first-gen interior, which was circa 1984 to uh, 1989, those digital dashes, you have to do the wiring like this but it's a lot easier than this because everything is contained in that digital dash. So you just gotta wire some stuff up because the connectors are different. Other than that, it's just a matter of going down the list. You know, you've got your turn signals and everything and anybody who needs, I'll try and uh, uh, improve my list here. This is for the uh, dash that I'm using which is out of uh, an 86 LeBaron GTS. I had wiring diagrams at some point but I lost them in that mess I call a garage. So I'm just gonna kinda go through it and do what I can to figure it out. Like for example, um, a tr this for the neon had an alternator light. I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use the oil pressure warning light because it's got an oil pressure gauge and I'm not stupid enough to uh, say, hey look, my oil pressure is gone. You know? Stupid people do stupid shit. 
So, I mean, it pretty much whittles the list down. I'm only using, you know, half of these lights. Well, like this one right here, I'm not even going to use. I'm not going to hook up the seatbelt light. I don't care. I know if my seatbelt's not on. If the car has an here. airbag, but it's disconnected, so I'm not going to bother with that, you know. So it's all pretty simple, pretty cut and dry. Uh, like I said, this vehicle was newer, so it has the speed sensor already. So up in the dash here, you're going to have a wire. In this case, it's white with orange, just like the old one. And the neon... Was it the same? In the, yeah, it was the same in the Dodge Neon, which was a '96, white with orange. They, so I pulled it out of the out of the bracket here, so that we could show. It's a real nasty mess because I basically taken to it with a cheap ass angle grinder, which worked and took a while. I had to carve all of the different little bumps and stuff out of here. Uh, this top piece of plastic I saved from the black too, to give it the right sandwiching thickness and kind of cover up a bit. So I took it out of there to show. It is just the two boards with a piece of cardboard in between to keep them from contacting each other. We've done all of our wiring. It looks like a nightmare. It's not nearly as nightmarish as it looks. But uh, I just haven't cleaned up the wiring and bundled it all together yet. So we got the wiring all hooked up. And we got our grounds. And I've got the two red lights here, which are for the signals. Um, actually, it turns out that I'd forgotten that I didn't even have a high beam indicator hooked up. But uh, our old Dodges don't blind anybody anyways, so I suppose it doesn't matter too much. I can tell when the high beams are on usually. So, and then this one is for the check engine light. The thing about this, that actually took me a minute to remember too, is the check engine light is a negatively triggered source. So in order to hook this bulb up, the check engine light wire is black with a pink stripe. And that's actually negative when the check engine light is on. So you have to hook the other wire of the light bulb up to a positive source switched or constant. In this case, I'm going switched because that's the way it's supposed to be anyways. And, uh, basically, uh, lost my train of thought. Uh, it's an incandescent bulb, so it doesn't give a damn about polarity. If you're ever going to get the little LED bulbs that you can push into these little connectors, which are really cool and I use them in my charger, uh, you put them in one way, they don't work. Put them in the other way, they'll work. They're, they're polarity sensitive, whereas incandescents don't give a damn who's on positive and who's on negative. So, at this point... Everything lights up. It's somewhat easier to see with that. It actually kind of, kind of, it kind of diffuses it. It's not too bad. There we go. Now we got it. So our check engine light is blinking out codes. Waiting for it. Eee, there, there it is. is. So then we've got our left signal, our right signal, and then put her in neutral. There we go. And now the sound gets all fuzzy from the bass, I'm assuming. Well, we've got our oil pressure, we've got our fuel, we've got our tap, our temperature, and our voltage. And uh, until we go down the road, we don't have speedometer, obviously. That's um, so fuzzy now. Yep, exactly. And then basically, for the dimming of this thing, like I said, if the headlight's on, it doesn't dim at all. So what you have to do is the yellow with orange stripe wire has to go to a positive source, which is what it does in the switch. In this case, I'm going to hook it up to a dimming toggle switch. Worked really well in the shadow. So basically, when it gets connected to power, it dims. And as long as it stays with the power, it will actually be dimmable, controllable through the switch like the normal lights would. You can make it dimmer or you can make it brighter. Basically, the idea for having the switch in there is, let's say it's a gloomy, kind of rainy day. If you turn on your headlights and it dims like this, it's going to be hard to see. So you turn the switch off to cancel it, and then the dash gets nice and bright, so you can still see it even though it's daylight on and you have your headlights on. That's why the factory switch, like I said, has two clicks to the left, not just one. So, really easy to hook up. And I can certainly help answer any questions as we go. And, uh... I'll go through and we'll reiter reiterate the wiring. The shadow is pretty similar to the uh, neon as far as colors go on the 86 Digital Ash and everything. So uh, I'm going to do my best to type up a list for anybody who wants and uh, kind of help people figure it out as we go. There we go. Now we're getting fuzzy stuff. Probably. Yeah, it looks just like it did in the shadow. Perfect. Switch, that's all good to go. Well, looks nice. Look at that. Sweet nectarine bullshit. Bum, 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 bum. 
Mantle hit the button. Yep, I guess that's the end of our video. I'll see you guys later.